love you. Thank you, Gwen. So my name is Claudia Biddle Travis, and I'm the founder, uh, the director, president, um, and principal rehabber for Golden Bow Wildlife. As a licensed wildlife rehabilitator, I take calls or uh, sometimes run across them even just on uh, randomly orphaned, injured, or traumatized wildlife. Starting probably before it's even light out, I get phone calls. People find squirrels that have fallen out of trees that have been attacked by dogs. If I have animals in clinic, and I usually do, we start either feeding first thing in the morning and feed them throughout the day, sometimes medication, wound care, trauma, going back and forth to vets, going and rescuing animals, uh, in between answering those calls, fielding calls all day. When it comes to the care of the animals, sometimes I'm just up around the clock. So that's my typical day. It sometimes doesn't end. When I'm not feeding them, we're doing laundry. We're sterilizing equipment. It's it's just nonstop. It's like running a full-time nursery, but a trauma unit as well. I can't have to answer. I know it's beansies. Beautiful boy was in the crosswalk and was hit by a car. People were trying to corral him into the street. Bo had a broken spine. Extreme dental problems from the fall. Okay, so the boys are getting their pecan pie. Hold the pie. Tigger is back there hiding from him because Bronson likes to jump on his back and pull all his fur out. Yes, you're a good boy, Sergio. Look at that face. Perfect. The threats are, of course, habitat loss, animals being attacked traumatic injury because of human activity. That could be cars, there's poisons, there's pesticides. It could be because somebody wants a paycheck from the city and they're over trimming the trees and these animals that have found pathways and gotten to know those, those rhythms, jumping from one tree to the other to the other for egress to get away from people. They come out of their, their nest and it's gone and they just come free falling to the ground. I was pushed away by the city who don't know what a rehabber is. Guys who are throwing anything they see into a wood chipper, they're not looking and they didn't want to listen. They didn't care that my work is unpaid also for the state. And I just asked them to really be nice and say, could you just flag me? I'm right over, over here. If you see, and, it, and I couldn't even get the word animal mess or dray out, they just don't care. This is what I deal with in this state. Putting this in the trash, but this is what I found at the base of the tree. Well, actually in a notch, actually in a notch where their food is, um, somebody put down Thai chilies, which are higher in capsaicin than by about 10 times than jalapenos. I'm so disgusted. Absolutely no regard for the animals and, um, and nobody patrols to do anything about it. I just see skateboarders hitting animals, bicycles, people actually kicking them, whipping them. This is chronic, chronic. And we really need somebody to do something. Write letters, please. I've written as much as I can. Please start writing letters to Boston. When I moved into this area, it was very clear that nobody was taking care of the wildlife. There was just nobody. And so when I would see animals downed, I just took it upon myself to help them as I had in Cambridge my whole life. Vets at that time in the 60s, we didn't have the laws we do now about wildlife and they would try and guide me with what tools, what I could do, what I couldn't do. So I learned from them. And then it just snowballed. It, it was an evolution of having done animal care and loving animals my whole life and being involved with medicine. The illness that I suffer from that, that kind of got me into this, this area to begin with is extraordinarily painful. When I'm with these animals, I virtually don't even feel pain. It's that much focus to just make sure that what you're doing is just healing them. Hey, hey. Don't steal this blueberry. All you can see is patchiness there. Isn't that sad? It's a lot better than it was when he went into the hospital, though. We're not sure if he's got full vision 
on both sides or if he's just reacting neurologically because of his head trauma. The reason I have a glove on one hand and not on the other, I have nerve damage too, so I really need to feel the very subtleties in, you know, movement change and pressure. And uh, he doesn't, you know, respond that well without the smell of me. So the smell of nitrile gloves, especially if it's a new box, uh, you know, that's, um, you can see he gets it with one hand more than the other. And I think that's because of the side. But he's doing so much better. He can even find the stick now. He used to just put the paw in his mouth and bite himself by accident occasionally. But I'm just not sure that he's seeing it or if he's not seeing double. He's eating a little piece of raw corn on his back in the hammock. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. See, his neck is still a bit twisty, but if we direct, redirect it, do some massage with warm um, pressure points and some warm cloth. So, <laughs> like I said earlier, I don't normally handle them much. This is cage cleaning day, so it's a couple step process. Oh my goodness, isn't she just beautiful? Look at that tummy, oh my gosh. You say hi to Jambalina? I discovered they like to take a little bite of each one and pull it in because one is not good enough. I don't know if you can see Joey's teeth, but there they are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> It's magical. It is really magical. They're, they're every, I love all of it, except for seeing them in pain, of course. You can see how much he's lost in his coloring. He's, he's had two broken arms in, in his life. Clearly pregnant and clearly injured. Oh, wobbles. I'm so sorry. Most of them are really looking rough, and I'm not finding about 60%, even though most of them seem to be out. They're starving. No sign of Blanca, no sign of wobbles. Seeing animals that no matter what you do and no matter how hard they fight lose their battle um, it doesn't happen as often as watching them recover because of the species that i deal with is very resilient my specialty is cirridae so the squirrel family julie was severely injured and she had her babies and my god julie is still alive oh Roxy, you are so wonderful. Something so special about this guy. It's not because he has one eye, it's his will to survive and his trust of only the right people. It's the intelligence factor that is absolutely amazing. This is little Lopsy. As you can see, Lopsy has a very, very bent ear. And I call him out because it looked like it was about to fall off at one point. Blanca is just a very short on melanin. Just like Inky was hypermelanistic, was not a true black squirrel. It's just amazing she's still alive. Still so tiny. But what a, what a great thing, you know, to survive such a horrible winter, flea infestation, being a runt, being orphaned. And here it is, 4th of July, wow. Occasionally we see illnesses that they can't recover from and the worst part is that 99% of it is because of human activity. Animals, to me, domestic and wild. Uh, there's so much to learn from them. We could learn to be more humane by watching animals. All the uh, alpha males, as I posted before, live together in one tree, pretty far, far, far off from the pregnant females when they're pregnant. Come on, Bruno! And they visit them after they have the babies, which is really amazing. And there they go, he's on the chase. Bruno chasing Miss Rue. 
Wow, never thought I'd get that on film. Two of my very favorites, having a little love soiree in the afternoon. Their awareness, their sensory abilities, as well as just their keen observation and the way they take care of each other is something very few of us really have an inside opportunity to watch when you look at a wild animal and you think they're just out there fending for themselves and you see the way that they will go to the ends of the their life virtually to save their young or to take care of each other and not even knowing that they're a social um, creature it's 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 a gift there's not one animal that i've ever taken care of that i've forgotten they all mean something i remember them all hi miss rue oh my darling girl and this is chooch you can see with a broken tail she was attacked too hi andy andy shasta's out willsie's out and some really there's thumbelina oh my gosh she's so pitifully small there she is bruno come here my beautiful boy this is beautiful little jenny Hi, sweetheart. I love you so much. Hi, Chuckles. Hi, my sweet boy. Roxy. Here's my one-eyed wonder. Hi, babes. Oh, it's Linus. Blanca. Hi. When I am out in in the public garden, if I have, you know, hard nut with me, it's always to check on an animal that I've either re-released or that I knew was in trouble to check on it. There's thousands of them out there. Don't feed all the squirrels. Do not advocate feeding any of the wildlife. In fact, we have a ton of problems with pollution and their water source, which is this pond, gets drained twice a year, but that doesn't fix the bacteria from the diarrhea from the bad feeding. What I do, what I do do is come out with hard nuts and soft nuts and try and determine which of these guys who are utterly malnourished uh, or dog attacked, um, are able to survive in the wild, have dental problems, broken jaws, other issues with their teeth, uh, foraging, and the only way to do that is to call them out and see which ones can handle their own. One of the things that happens with, say, squirrels, um, they have incisors, just like, like bunny rabbits, and if they don't gnaw, constantly to keep those teeth trimmed. If those teeth, if they fall or get attacked by uh, a dog or, or get kicked or something happens and those teeth don't line up, that's a very slow, painful death. And we see that naturally and we see it from trauma where the teeth will grow and grow right into the face or into the brain. So when I'm out there, it's not to feed them. We don't want animals coming up to people because they'll go up to the wrong person. Usually what we feed them is very bad for them and they get very sick. Or they get into trouble just being around humans in general. They trust us and they shouldn't. These are animals that can theoretically live for 20 years, Eastern Gray Squirrels. So learn about them. Don't believe what maybe, you know, somebody told you when you were a kid and think that they're dangerous. There isn't one documented case of rabies attributed to an Eastern Gray Squirrel. They're not rats. They're not nocturnal. So those are the misconceptions. Usually that people think there's a zoonotic relationship to humans or that they will attack a human unsolicited and unprovoked. And that is almost never the case. So, yeah. I'm knee deep in mud, but it doesn't matter because I'm sitting here with my beautiful Bruno. There's Julie's tummy. You can see she's got a lot of baby. Come here, sweetie. I want to see you. Let me see your coat. Squirrely, squirrelies everywhere. I know. There's Chippy's back. It's really bad. Really bad. She's a little bit uh, timid because of that broken leg. And it's bad. I'll tell you. See, she can claw and hang because of her claws. She can do tree ambulation, but uh, she's not good on the ground. And this fears me with the ice really does. It's a really bad, dislocated, shattered hip. I can tell from just looking at some pelvic issue. I still am just horrified that his buddy, Blanca, the white squirrel, is missing. 
and Bruno. They've both been missing since mid-September. comes the babies. I'm waiting for Lopsy to come from the other side. I've called out Lops. Oh, there's Bruno! There's Bruno! 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 Bruno, boy! There's my Bruno. Tina Tina is getting ready for the storm. My little orphan here. Yeah, she has nothing to eat. She has no mommy and she's so tiny. Sweet Pea has a, a completely deformed paw and can't hold any nuts in both hands. So she just kind of balances it on her wrist. It's rough, it's rough out here. This one over here has got a horrible head injury and it looks like maybe some broken teeth. I'm just not sure. You can see, trying to eat. I'm here with Angel at Julie's tree and this is a bad scene. Um, I saw Bruno, his tail's been bitten, a good portion of it is off, Chuckles has not come out, and a lot of these guys are bleeding. And I'm checking, Ursa is still alive, but uh, she's definitely having trouble. Uh, that's the pregnant one with the head injury. Here's Weena, um, she's being bullied by larger animals, and the hawk was out on top of her tree and soaring over. She lives way over there by the street. See, this is maybe one of the last videos of Bruno. He's really wounded and he's having trouble eating. He looks like he's, he's on his last legs. This is just, just heartbreaking. I know, Bruno, I know. I love you. Come on, boy. Hi, sweetheart. I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, God, this really hurts. I don't want to see him injured. I don't want to see him struggling. I love him so much. I finally found Chuckles. He's over here. He's badly damaged his face. Come on, Miss Rue. Here's Miss Rue. Chuckles' nose is really smashed in, like he fell or was defending maybe Dorothea. Um, I don't know. But anyway, he's been missing. Now I know why. They're usually not missing unless they're dead or they're injured. And you can see from his nose. I'm giving him soft food because I don't know if he can open it up right now. So there's Blanca. Uh, he looks terribly thin. Um, <clears throat> when they started destroying the trees, he started running off to calm Ab at night. You see that funny tail? It's kind of a beacon because when it's when she's when she's uh, shedding, it, it looks very skinny and rat-like, and she draws a lot of attention. But um, <laughs> she's she's awesome. It took her three years to uh, actually be able to reproduce successfully and be a mom, but she's a darn good one now. So you may be able to hear off in the distance, <laughs> Rue is talking to somebody else in another tree, and over here, these guys were talking to her. They're having a conversation. That's actually not as much of a warning call, but they're talking. Okay, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. Oh, Roxy's face? Roxy's missing an eye. Aww. I wonder how this happened. Yeah, and attack, dog attacks usually. Oh. Because they're forced, as, as they keep ruining the trees here, they're forced to come down. And, and they're in the mouths of off-leaf dogs, which are also illegal. The most helpful thing that people can do is become wildlife rehabilitators. Now, that's not for everybody. There are people who work, they decide that they can handle a certain species that doesn't require around the clock care. For instance, Eastern cottontails do not eat every two hours the way that squirrels do, or well, baby, baby squirrels. They eat a couple times a day. So that may be something that someone could do where they feed them in the morning, feed them at night. There's a lot involved with, with re-releasing animals in general, but not bunnies. If somebody isn't interested in doing that, they should make sure that if they do find a wild animal, that they don't try and take care of it themselves. They consult a wildlife rehabilitator or a wildlife center. So getting on your government website, wherever that is. Here, it's mass.gov. Look up wildlife rehabilitator. If you can't find them, call a wildlife center. Uh, generally, the areas uh, that used to take care of them, like I was saying earlier, uh, Animal Rescue League, Humane Society, very few states have that support for wildlife. And last but not least, if you do find wildlife, support your wildlife rehabilitators. We don't charge. 
it's illegal to charge, but every drop of medication, every syringe, every nipple, every bandage um, costs a lot of money. And then that's only the beginning when it comes to, you know, the pre-release and the thousands it takes really to rehabilitate animals. So those are the three things. Educate, become involved, support your wildlife rehabilitator, and by all means, teach each other and your, you know, the younger generations what wildlife is all about and why it's necessary. Really learn about them because these are our neighbors. These are literally our neighbors. So uh, we, sh we should be respecting them. If we didn't know about the behavior of wildlife, we wouldn't have clothes. We wouldn't have buildings. We probably couldn't take care of ourselves. We've learned everything we've known how to do to survive from watching wildlife. And we've kind of lost that connection. And I think we need to learn it again as we try and repair or hang on to this planet. We need to watch our, our fellow neighbors, our animal neighbors. The more we know, the better off they will be, the more comfortable we will be living side by side with them. And the smaller you know, the planet gets, the more we are really in interacting with them all the time.